Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like you please. Tate is looking a bit different on today's days of our lives. And no, today on days of our lives, Brady erupts at Tate and Holly, Everett won't play ball with Jutta, and Eric receives a concerning message. In the morning, Tate, now played by drinks coffee with Brady in the townhouse living room. Brady asks how his time with his friends went last night. Tate hedges as he says reconnecting was really great. After Holly's physical therapy, Nickel tells her daughter how proud she is of her hard work. Holly wonders if she's proud enough to give her back her phone. Nickel passes and Holly stalks upstairs. In the living room, EJ commiserates with Wai Shin on the phone about the pain of losing a child. They also discussed Stefan being in jail for working with Clyde and the drug ring. He vows to deal with it. At the Spectator, Leah reads Chad his new lady whistleblower horoscope page, as Everett arrives with news for Chad. His sources at the Salem PD told him Stefan is in jail for running drugs for Clyde. Over coffee at the pub, Sloan prepares to leave for a full day of clients. It's not her choice, but the bills are piling up. Eric knows, adding that his photography business isn't raking in the money yet. Stephanie stops by their table happy to see they've brought the baby with them. We always do, Sloan deadpans. Stephanie offers to babysit, especially since she misses being around Chad's kids. Jada brings a cardboard box full of her important papers to Rafe's office. She knows she'll find something to prove she's not still married to Bobby Stain. As they dig into it, Jada finds her divorce decree. Rafe quips he's happy not to be sleeping with a married woman. Sloane meets with her new client, Jada, as well as Rafi at the station. She relays that she just saw Stephanie who seemed sad about the whole thing, but she kept confidentiality. Jada shows her the divorce papers, confident she and Bobby are no longer married. Sloan reports that while that is a divorce decree, the decree that was filed didn't have Bobby's signature, only Jada's. Technically, they are still married. As Jada reels, Sloan tells her all she needs is for Everett to sign the papers. At the paper, Leo gasps upon getting an alert on his phone. He says he has a lead, yeah, a lead, on a story at Saxton's he must check out. Once he's gone, a snarky Everett asks Chad if he can post his story about Stefan, or does Chad want him to cover it up like the one about the raid on the bistro? Chad knows that was a mistake, and tells Everett to write his damn story. Stephanie enters to announce she's staying on as the paper's PR company. However, she wants Chad, not Everett, as her point of contact. Everett gets a call from Jada to meet at the pub right now. In the Dimera living room, E.J. tells Nicole that the board wants Stefan to resign immediately as CEO, or they'll invoke the morality clause and kick him out. Nicole wonders if Stefan is responsible for the drugs that put Holly in a coma. All E.J. knows is he was trafficking Clyde's drugs to try and save Gabby's life. Brady strides in, demanding a public apology from E.G. to Tate. Holly passes through to the French doors to walk around the garden. Holly finds Tate outside the front door. He apologizes for throwing pebbles at her window, but she doesn't have a phone. To rectify that, he gives her a burner phone. She calls him a lifesaver and hugs him. They dread going back to school after spring break, but at least their parents can't keep them apart there. Holly suggests they find each other in between periods, hold hands, and find a private spot at lunch to be together. She kisses him, and they suggest they sneak up to her room. In the Dimera living room, E.J. and Brady argue over E.G.'s handling of the case. Nickel breaks them up and tells E.G. they need to set a good example for the kids. E.G. agrees and apologizes to Brady for accusing Tate of a crime he didn't commit. The DA's office will issue an appropriate statement as soon as possible. They shake hands. When Nickel and E.G. walk Brady to the front door, Holly and Tate slip through the French doors. The adults all return to see them. Brady shouts he doesn't want Tate around Holly. He can't even believe he wants to be around her. Tate announces he forgives her, but Brady says he shouldn't. Nicole agrees they shouldn't hang out for the time being. The teens protest, but Brady declares they aren't allowed to see each other. Leo runs into Eric and Jude in the square. He shows off his new scarf and bags of clothes he just bought on sale.
He suggests Eric do some shopping as well, but Eric remarks he and Sloan are budgeting. Later at home, Eric finds a note from the landlord telling Sloan rent is past due. At the paper, Stephanie ponders the Everett situation. Chad suggests she distance herself from him. He's not jealous, he just doesn't want to see her get hurt more than she already has. Upon meeting Jada, Rafe and Sloan at the pub, Everett is presented with divorce papers to sign. He furiously scribbles his signature as Everett Lynch, but Sloan needs him to sign as Robert Stain. Everett states he's not that man so that would be forgery. Jada will have to find another way to get her divorce. Next on Days of Our Lives and Constantine seeks an update from Theresa.